Hey, it's Clint, the Ace Networker, and what is DHCP? Why do we need it? What does it do? Do we have to have it on our network? All good questions. Let's answer those real quick, real simple. DHCP is something that's taken for granted every single day, especially modern day with modern day networks. You see, without DHCP, networking would be a tedious, primitive, difficult, and extraneously boring and impossible task. DHCP is an acronym meaning Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Its primary and biggest, really, function is to assign IP addresses to each host on a network. This is much like a teacher assigning names to students in a class or numbers to students in a class. So each host can have an IP address or a name on the network and it can communicate with other hosts on that network if it has that IP address assigned to it. Now, DHCP also assigns other things to hosts, such as the subnet mask, the default gateway that host will actually use, and the DNS address. DHCP can be a server and or a client, so let's get right to it. Using this simple network as our example, we have two hosts here, or two PCs in this case, a switch and a router, along with those two PCs. In order for these two computers to connect and to work on the network, they will each need a unique IP address. Unique not just to each other, but unique on the entire network or the local area network segment that they're connected on here. If each host or component on the network does not have a unique IP address, incorrect devices will be receiving and or sending information and you really don't have a network. Now, if you just have two hosts, as in our example here, or even 10 to 15 hosts on a small network, you can easily statically assign IP addresses to each host and be done with it. But imagine the complexity when you have 50 to 100 hosts or components on a network, or 200, 300, or 400 or more hosts on a network. No one I've ever spoken to wants to manually, statically assign all those IP addresses. What if you inadvertently use an IP address you previously used on another host? How do you keep track? This is where DHCP comes into play in the biggest way possible. If you have a DHCP server set up on your local area network segment and you've assigned a scope of IP addresses to it to actually use, and they call it a scope, that's the range of IP addresses that that DHCP server is allowed to hand out, and each host is running an operating system that typically contains a DHCP client, then the DHCP client on each host can ask for an IP address as soon as it connects to the network, powers on, and boots up. For the DHCP server to work, it will need to be somewhere on this same network segment to receive the request for an IP address from the DHCP client that's on each of those hosts. It will then choose an IP address out of its allowed scope of IP addresses and respond to that host with the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, and the DNS information. Now you can run a DHCP server on a server or you can oftentimes run it on a router or a layer 3 switch with the capability. On your home system, you'll likely find it on your home router. On an enterprise level network, however, it's more than likely running on a server. So when you power on a PC, a laptop, or any device connected to a network, it sends out a DHCP request asking for an IP address that's not yet being used on the network. It says, hey, I need an IP address. This request is what's known as a broadcast. It's a broadcast that's sent out because it essentially is shouting to the entire network, hey, I need an IP address. I Need a DHCP server to respond back with one, please. Now, devices that are not a DHCP server will look at that broadcast message and simply drop it. This first step is known as DHCP discover. For the DHCP offer, that's actually step two in the process. When the DHCP server gets that message, it responds with, I get it. I understand. Here's an IP address you can use that's not being used by anyone else, any other host on this network segment. Then we move on to step three, which is the DHCP request, and that's where the host says, I'll take that IP address, and it sends that request to the DHCP server. Then you have the fourth step in the DHCP process overall, which is the DHCP ACK, or DHCP Acknowledgement. Now this is where the DHCP server sends that IP address to the host that requested an IP address, along with the subnet mask, the default gateway that the host needs to use, and the DNS, and the DHCP server says, you can have it or use it, but I want it back at some point. It expires after a certain period of time, and I'll then hand it out to some other host if you don't confirm you still need it or are no longer using it. So there you have it. That's 
pretty much the basics of DHCP, why you need it, and what it's used for. If you'd like to learn more, and if you'd like to get access to my free subnetting course where I teach you all the basics of subnetting, how it's used, and, and how simple it can actually be for you, feel free to click on the link in the description below. I would also invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel here, like my channel, like my video, share it if you want to, let other people know about it, and I will see you on the next video.